Hello and welcome back to the Bober Academy Football Podcast as we continue our Lyman of the Week series. I'm your host, Chris Bober. I'm the founder of the Bober Academy, eight-year NFL veteran, four years for the Giants, four years for the Chiefs. I have the distinction of starting at every position on the O-line in the NFLs. And now I'm back. I'm, I'm running my Bober Academy. I'm coaching at Creighton Prep. And um, one of my favorite things is to just highlight offensive line play in the area. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that's watching or listening that if you are watching this on YouTube, right down there is a little subscribe button. I'd love if you subscribe to our channel. Um, if you're listening to this podcast on any of your podcast devices, make sure you subscribe so you get notifications. And then, of course, on all the social media outlets, please like, retweet, comment, share, do all those things just to highlight great offensive line play. Now, this week is um, we're joined by the Elkhorn Antlers, and the Antlers are near and dear to me. You know, my kids both graduated from Elkhorn. My son won a state championship there. My daughter won a state championship on the dance team there. So um, once an antler, always an antler. So I'm so excited to have some great fellas on here. Coach Dan Feichert, the head coach, in his third year as the head coach. He's done a marvelous job over there for the antlers. I also have uh, Tim Boomgarden and Willie Rush, two of their offensive linemen. Guys, thanks for joining us on the podcast tonight. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks, awesome, Chris. awesome. Okay, so we are kicked off into the NFL season. Now, before I get started, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see that I have a shiner here on my left eye. Just want you to know I did not get in a fight. My wife did not get mad at me in bed the other night. I reached over to get a pillow, and my dog rose up her head and hit me right in the tip of the eyebrow. So I got a really tough-looking shiner right there, but I, I wish I had a better story. But it was just my dog that caught me just perfectly. And um, gave me a little bit of swelling there. So um, if you're watching this, don't be afraid. But, um, okay, Coach, so you've been there now three years, right? And I've, I know you've been there before that. You, you know, obviously a graduate there, does some great things here. Um, tell me about 2023, right? Your first two years, you had some really awesome teams. I mean, mm -hmm. great records, got to the playoffs, won some games. Um, of course, you're on the staff when they won the state championship last time. But tell me your feelings about this 2023 team. I mean, we got some new guys out there uh, because Elkhorn, like you said, traditionally graduates a lot of good seniors. But tell me what you guys are looking forward to this year and, and what's your outlook? Yeah, I think we've got uh, a group of seniors that um, are leading us in the right direction. Um, and we've got actually you know, a lot of kids on the team, Chris, which is awesome. Like we've got a really strong sophomore class um we've got a really good group of juniors um i think this team is a little different than the teams i've had the past two years just because uh we still got good line play i mean our defensive line against waverly this last week was really stout um and you know on the same token we're going to be different in just that we've got some some really talented skill kids kind of that we can spread the ball around a little more so um you know the last two years it's been real nice to kind of have our double tight two fullback power set and just smash people um, and, and we can still do that with some of our sets this year, but I've also got a quarterback and, you know, some backs and receivers that we can throw the ball to and spread the ball around. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to be a little different feel from maybe the traditional Elkhorn. You know, we're still going to run the ball and, and we're still going to establish the run game, but um, we've also got other ways we can move it too. Nice, nice. Yeah, and there's are they're traditionally – you know, a team that wins a lot of football games, plays a, a certain brand of football. And, and you got some guys on here that, that add to that too. Now, Willie Rush um, is your center, right? I've watched him play for the last couple of years. I know I saw him on the field as a freshman and he continues to get better every year. You know, Willie, coming into your, your junior year, um, I know I saw you got voted a captain, which is a, a huge honor as a junior. Yeah. It really is. Um, tell me about your thoughts about this team and what you guys expect this year. Um, well, we got a good, uh, leadership, uh, senior class that's full of leaders and with a big, like skill heavy junior class that can like run behind and pass behind all of them that are going to show us, um, all the seniors can show the juniors how to, uh, play football properly, basically. But I think we're going to have a really young team that's going to be determined to win multiple games this year. Yeah, you know, I got a young team over at Creighton Prep, too. And, you know, I tell my guys, you got to trust the process. You know, and Coach and I were talking about it. You know, we don't have a lot of varsity scar tissue. There, there's something about going out and playing in those games, that experience of playing under those lights. Um, you got to go through it a little bit to get up to speed. And what I know about the, the Antlers is, is they traditionally, you know, come on stronger and stronger as the season goes on. Now, now Tim, you know, you're one of the guys that's coming into the fold this year. Um 
on the offensive line. I just want to play defensive line too. Tell me, how did camp go for you guys, and how was um, how's it been so far um, heading into the season? Uh, it's been a grind. You know, you work every day. Um, you're starting to see the little payoffs. You know, you, we got some big plays against Waverly. We blocked re- we blocked well. Uh, I think all around we just have a lot of things to improve and a lot of places where we can get better. But uh, with camp, we had like a solid few weeks of practice going up to it. We've had just a solid uh, summer lifting session. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited for this football season because I think that we got a lot of big plays in our future. Yeah, and I imagine you're kind of like us where uh, uh, there's so many plays that you feel like you left out there, just one little miss block or a little angle or or something like that. And those are things that can get cleaned up, right? But it, but it really takes – um, working hard in practice. You can't just coast, right? And we push our guys every day. Coach Fiker said you guys have had a great week of practice. And I'm telling you as a coach now, you can't believe how much confidence that gives us as coaches going into the games. Um, now, now, you guys went out and played a really good Waverly team. You know, Waverly's always has a good team last year, Coach, uh, every year, Coach. And, and you guys have had their number for a little while. They, they kind of got you a little bit next week, this week. But tell me your takeaways after watching the film – and, you know, been around this game for a while. Tell me your takeaways of, of what you guys got out of that game. Yeah, I think uh, Waverly is a real tough game one um, every year. It's like the last two years we've kind of squeaked victories out um, at their place, real close games. Um, they're going to play you the way they play you, which is press man coverage. They're going to have an odd front slanting nose. Um, they're going to have hyper aggressive backers. They're going to have seven, eight in the box, and they're just going to try and you know make you throw on them. And they've got really good athletes. So, um, you know, we kind of knew what we were going to get, and we, for the most part, got what we thought we were going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yeah, they were good. You know, they've got really good skill kids. They're they're well coached. Um, one thing I think we kind of took away from the game, um, and after looking at the film, we kind of confirmed this is. You know, there's a couple scenarios where that's a seven-seven game or a fourteen-seven game, and and it it just, you know, you can all say ifs, ands, and buts, but you know, we we made too many mistakes, and mm-hmm. and we had too many offensive penalties to kill drives. We had a couple turnovers that were really untimely, and there's a kick return that we gave up. So it's like, I I feel confident in, um, you know, I feel like we looked we looked at film yesterday as a team, and I think we kind of all walked out of that room thinking, hey, you know, if, if we get a chance to play these guys again, you know, I think we'll compete really, really well. Um, because like you said, Chris, like shoot, second play of the game, um, we are not even a missed block. Boom, boom makes a block. I mean, it's literally our, our quarterback's feet get tangled up with our running back's feet and he falls down and it's like, man, there's a seam for mm-hmm. six yards wide. I mean, it's a be- beautiful executed. It was just like, but one guy kind of one thing wrong and it just turned into a three yard gain. And so it's like to the untrained eye, it, you know, it looks like it wasn't maybe our best night. Um, but I think after looking at the film, we all agree. Um, we're close. We're close to, to playing with a legitimate top five team in class B. So nice. Yeah. We had the same exact, we had a bootleg where a guy was wide open and the quarterback who's hit that a hundred times of practice, threw it over his head and, yep. and little things like that c- come back to haunt you. And I think it's a great lesson for the guys, especially the guys who haven't you know been on that field a lot to say like, you know, you got to trust what we're coaching you to do and, and really do that. Now, um, you know, Tim, let me ask you, what, what were some of the good takeaways that you had coming out of that game? Um, you know, and I know you guys played hard and you guys got first time out there as a unit. What were some of the things that you took away from the game that you did well? I'm trying to unmute Tim. Um, I think that overall our line did a pretty good job mm-hmm. for at least that first half. And uh, I think we just need to continue uh, – pressing and we need to be better conditioned further in the future Mm -hmm. obviously like i was out uh third and most of the fourth quarter with cramps which is one of my biggest issues that like i'm still dealing with i'm still uh drinking only water from now on you know but one of my biggest takeaways has to be you know you have to prepare yourself for the game more than just on uh more than just on a know the plays level, you have to get your body ready before the games. So I'd say that's probably my biggest takeaway. Nice and a huge lesson, right, Coach? You know, some of those guys haven't had to do that before, and it's a different level when you get to that varsity level. Now, how about you, Willie? What are what are some of the things that you guys can improve on um, after seeing the film of this game? Um, basically, just being more intense and just physical, like just all around. Like Waverly is going to be a, a physical and uh, powerful team, and. We just – this Friday night just got way out of our control on the edges and 
in the middle, just on offense and defense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the phys- physicality is always a big deal. Um, now, coach, you got a, another tough opponent coming up, you know, and you know, I'm, I love Class B football because every week it seems like you get these kind of teams. But you got a, a tough Norris team who's historically a hard hitting. Uh, they got big kids. They always got good skilled players. Tell me about the. Um, you know, you don't have to reveal your game plan a little bit, but tell me about <laughs> what you have going into this week and what you got want to see out of your team against, against Norris. Yeah, uh, no, Norris. You're right, Chris. I mean, there's been many years we've opened with Norris, either mm-hmm. driving down there or them driving up to us. Um, it's always a tough game with Norris. We were down there two years ago. It was the first game of my career, um, and we have to kick a field goal with like a minute left to beat those guys. I mean, so they they play well. It's their their home opener. You know, they had a zero week game, and they kind of took care of Blair a little bit. And I think they kind of opened some eyes of, hey, they they beat Blair by three scores, and and Blair is a darn good team. And then you know, last week they um, lost to Seward on the road. Um, had the ball at the one inch line with under a minute left and they get stopped. So, I, I mean, they are very realistically a, a two and O top 10 football team that we're you know, going to play on the road in our first away game. So um, I, like you said, Chris, we, there's no off weeks in class B. I mean, we, yeah. we have a just absolute grinder of a schedule um, and it only gets harder as we progress. So um, I think Waverly it was a nice test right away to just show us, Hey, here's how much better we got to get. Um, I think Norris is going to be a really good challenge again, um, they're going to be well coached. Um, you know, they, they've got really good skill kids. Uh, one thing that I feel confident about is I, I, I think we saw a really physical Waverly team, mm-hmm. um, that I think is kind of going to set the standard for us the rest of the year. I mean, if we can play to the level of physicality we saw Friday night, um, if we can get off the ball, like we do, um, if we can establish some of our power run game, mm-hmm. um, I'm really good about our chances. Cause no, yeah. I mean, Norris, you know, if you want to play out on the edge with them, that's their game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they throw the ball well. And uh, I think they definitely have some weaknesses that we're going to try and exploit. Um, but, you know, I'm sure they're watching films. So yeah. It's not us. So, yeah, it'll be a good battle Friday. Nice. Now, Willie, as a guy who's um, been on that varsity field for the last couple of years, you know, what's your message to your guys this week? Uh, you know, it's always hard to start 0-1. And, one. and, I, and I, played, I played football for 19 years, man. And there's several times we started with a loss, you know, as, as one of the captains, as one of the returning starters, tell me about how, what have you done this week to motivate your guys? Uh, I've always just, I've this week, I've just tried to encourage them and just keep them just like their moods up. Cause even after a, a tough loss, like Waverly this week, then we still have the rest of the season to go and more games to play that we can just possibly win and help us carry our momentum into playoffs. Nice, nice. How about you, Tim? What, what's this week of practice? You feel like it's um, stepped up a little bit. You have a different message out there, a different um, level of physicality now that you've seen what it takes to, to play at this level. Oh, a hundred percent, absolutely. Uh, I feel like as a team, like what Willie said, trying to keep our like uh, trying to keep our morale up, and also just playing with another level of intensity. Like this isn't a scout team we're playing against. This is going to be an all out dog fight for four quarters and we got to get used to that. And I'm excited for it, but I think definitely this week we're adjusting and we're playing harder and with more intensity. Yeah. And coaches, it's kind of hard to impress on these guys, how important it is to, to, to go that hard in practice until you have to do it in a game. Right. Yeah. Especially it's some inexperienced guys. Um, but let's, you know, we can talk about the whole team, but I'm, I'm an offensive guy. So, <laughs> you know, I, I know the antlers look a little different this year, right? You got a different type of quarterback a really good quarterback. You know, mm-hmm. I, he, he was, there's a lot of people that wanted him on their team coming yes. out, coming out of middle school. I remember him yeah. in middle school and um, you know, so Kate Matthews is, is your quarterback now and you got some other guys. Tell me about your offense. What's your kind of philosophy is for your offense, you know, in 2023. Yeah, we came into this year um, kind of understanding the guys that we had coming back uh, and, and, like I told you, Chris, it's kind of a different different team than I've had the past two years. But I think we've really leaned into that. Um, you know, we've kind of adjusted some sets to get some guys and hopefully some some matchups that benefit us. Um, I just think overall scheme wise, you know, obviously we're putting putting a lot more into the hands of Cade Matthews just because of the kind of quarterback he is. Um, mm-hmm. He's a great athlete. He, I mean, he ran for a forty yard touchdown on Waverly because he can he can move. You know, he's a three hundred meter hurdler, so he's just a good athlete and and he's a good kid and. Um, you know, the, the team, the guys, you know, he's a, he's a captain too as a junior. Um, and, you know, there's a lot a lot that's going to be put on his shoulders. Um, and I think our hope is that this week, kind of understanding that 
I, I feel for Cade too. And I feel for Willie, you know, Willie starts his first game um, as a junior center um, mm-hmm. with a slanting nose, you know, Chris, it's like, how hard is that? And then Cade's playing press man coverage in his first game. It's like, yeah. you can't ask for much of a tougher test for two kids that are really good kids that are, you know, worked hard all summer and, and they handled it really well. Um, mm-hmm. And so I just, I'm excited to see how we respond this week um, against a Norris team that I think we're going to be able to, to do some things against um, through the pass game and run game. Um, so yeah, no, I, our offense is definitely a little different. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if you see a little bit of old school Elkhorn at times too. Um, cause I was just talking to coach Backus today and I said, Backus, you know, we gotta, we gotta find something that works and we gotta stick to it. And he said, coach, you can also just stick to it until it works. <laughs> I said, you know, that's right, coach. So I, yeah, it's nice having that guy in the box kind of keeping me centered too on who we've been for, for 40 plus years. So. Oh man, Coach Backus! For those of you listening and, and watching this, Coach Backus has been with Delcorn for about forty-two years, and I mean the guy—I think the guy still play football if he wanted to. He's out there warming up with the guys, stretching with them, um, and every time I see him, I, I just talk to him for about a half hour. So one, one a, a guy that probably forgot more football than any of us will ever know. And it's yep. those kind of things that he knows how to do. I'd love to see you guys put Rip in there and just start blasting the ball. <laughs> um, okay, Willie, you've been around the Antlers for a couple of years. Um, tell me about the identity of your offense this year. It's a little bit different, right? And, you know, like I said, I've watched Elkhorn football for a long time, and, and there was just this p- ground and pound deal. You guys have some more weapons this year. Tell me about your identity on offense. Well, I feel like this year going to be not like pass heavy, but we're going to pass the ball a lot more, especially with Cade behind me behind our solid line this year and then we're gonna have two tall lengthy wide receivers that can just go up and get multiple jump balls and also just good great amazing route runners that we can just use with also a really powerful and explosive running back elliot who can run over most people with his small frame Nice, nice, nice. Okay, Tim, tell me about, you know, O-linemen usually are pretty good buddies with the quarterbacks and the running backs. Tell me about your running running attack. You know what I mean? We've heard about the quarterback, but I know you guys still like to run the ball, man. Tell me about you guys you got back there running the ball. Um, Well, we got we got a really solid running back group, especially in our junior class. We have uh, Elliot Beister, like Willie mm-hmm. said, absolute dog. I mean, he's just amazing in the backfield. And uh, Jaden Moody, he can stop on a dime. And uh, Xander, he's a really hard runner. I mean, I'd hate to tackle him in open space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kind of glad I don't have to because I'm on the D line. But um, I'm really excited. You know, obviously, I'm more of a. I feel like running the ball is more where I want to block. You know, pass plays can kind of get boring sometimes. So I love to get those ugly three yards for those twenty play drives. Those are probably my favorite. Yeah, man, there's nothing like kind of leaning on a defense and wearing them out. And then third and fourth quarter, you start to take over. Um, okay, coach, um, tell me about your guys up front. We got two of your, your guys right here. And it says a lot that you want to bring a couple of juniors on here. You know what I mean? And most of the time when I, when I you know, take have coaches come on here, they're like, okay, I got a couple of seniors I want to put on. But you felt like your leadership's in your junior group. Tell me about your guys, who you got up front this year. You know, let, let everyone know about the guys. These, these A lot of them are new guys. Tell us about who we got. Yeah, um, our O-line honestly started to come together this summer when Coach Neismer, uh, my O-line coach, and I were meeting. And at the beginning of the summer, we were talking, and we kind of met with some of the guys. And um, we had an opening at center, and, and Nice and I kind of looked at each other. I mean, this is like day one of camp, Chris. This is like June 5th. And we're looking at each other like, who's the guy? And we both kind of look at each other, and we were like, we know who it is. It's Willie Rush. You know, yeah. Willie played tackle for us last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was one of those things that, you know, he's a sophomore starting on a really good football team. Um, you know, learned a ton from those guys around them. And, and we're like, if anybody can handle this, it's Willie. Cause he picked up our offense so quick. And um, so, so once we had Willie kind of set as the anchor of that thing, then we kind of started fitting the pieces around him. Um, you know, Tim boom, uh, as we call him, boom, boom, uh, <laughs> works, worked real hard all, all summer, all spring, all winter in the weight room. Um, super strong kid uh, that just put in a lot of time. And, and it got to a point where, you know, again, the summer and, and early in camp, Coach Nisen are like, we got no choice. This kid's got to start somewhere. Um, mm-hmm. And it just kind of, he settled in at guard and, and has been really solid for us and, and has been playing really good D tackle too. Um, and then around these guys, you know, we got, we got some, some seniors that have been playing. Um, so we've got Austin Kimmel that's been rotated out at tackle. Um, we've got um, Colin Hinkle. He was in the mix last year at tackle too. Um, and then we've been kind of 
kind of working on another guard and, and we've kind of been moving some guys too. So there's a couple of faces you'll probably see in the mix this year. But one thing I do like about this crew is um, we do have some younger faces and, and we've got, um, you're right, Chris, we've got some, some really good senior leaders and we've got some really good junior leaders. Um, and I, I think if you've watched any of our film, either it's, you know, the, the scrimmage or the red white game or Waverly, you know, the two guys on this podcast are guys that are making plays for us and are, and are leading our line and, um, yeah. So when you asked, I, that was a no brainer who I wanted to bring on. So nice, nice. Okay. Willie, I want to ask you this cause I'm, I'm a center at heart. You know, I, I played a lot of center, um, in the NFL and I always felt like this as a center, you gotta be like the quarterback of the O-line, right? You're the one that makes, identifies the mic. You make all the calls. You can, you can get communication out there. Uh, do you feel like it's like, um, more responsibility it, being a center and having to make those calls and also be kind of at the same time, be the leader of that group. Is that kind of, how have you embraced that role of coming from like tackle to center? Cause I did the exact same thing in the NFL and I love center. I love center and I love putting in the extra work and preparing so that I can make the calls for my guys and they can follow me. Um, well, obviously switch from tackle to center. It wasn't easy. I had to do a lot of snaps just to mm -hmm. even get that down properly, even to my first step off the ball. But it's always, it's always been uh, not difficult, but it's going to be it's a lot more challenging because I always have to be aware of what my linemen are doing and also, like, where the back is going. Mm -hmm. But it's always just got to be communication. And if I just get that down, then I think we're going to be pretty good this year. Yeah, and plus it sounds like you guys are adding some new elements to your offense in the passing game, which brings in protections and who's blocking who. Um, if you have what I've seen is your quarterback can run the ball a little bit, which is a huge advantage, but it also is more assignments, right? You put in different types of plays. I, I've seen Elkhorn, you know, in the last few years I watched them, they started with blast, then they have trap, then they have count. I mean, it's just coming off the ball and hitting guys, and, and it gets a little more complicated when you add more elements to it. So you definitely need – a senior like like Willie in there. Um, okay, Tim, you know, boom, boom. I think it's a perfect guy to ask this question. You know, tell me about some of your guys up front. I mean, you know, you could tell me how the, this guy can block here. This guy, I want some good stuff, you know, like who's the guy that's the funny guy, you know, who's the guy that um, kind of smells a little bit. Who's the guy that's a little crazy, you know, I mean, give me some dirt on these guys. It's, it's going to go, you know, out on YouTube and everything. So we got to be a little PG, but give us some insight into that O-line room because I, I know you got some characters up there. Um, I think Brennan Dipple's a name that everybody on our line knows. Uh, he told like he, he helps us stay focused, but at the same time he keeps the mood a little light, you know, Mm -hmm. He likes to crack jokes here and there. He's a really funny guy. Um, yeah, we like to trash talk a lot. Uh, me and Kim will sometimes get into it when we're trash talking, just to make it make each other better. But we always crack jokes at each other, and uh, I think just across the line, we got a lot of funny guys. But Willie Rush, he he likes to make some jokes sometimes, and we all have a great time. There's a lot of good guys. Who's like the one you got to kind of be a little afraid of? Like you got someone that doesn't talk much, but he has a switchy flip. You got one of those guys up front. Oh, definitely Austin Kimmel. Like, yeah. I make obviously I make a lot of jokes with him and stuff, but I I never try to like push too far because he is scary. <laughs> like, he is somebody off the field where like I would not want to have to like fight or be on his bad side. He's a really scary dude off the field. No, that's a, that's a great dude to play next to, man. You want him on your side. Um, all right, coaches, we kind of wrap this up here. Um, I've seen. You know, Elkhorn, if you've been around Elkhorn, and a lot of teams do this, but you guys always have a theme for this year. So tell me about the 2023 theme and how you came up with it and kind of how you see it playing into your, your you know, your season and how, how you're reminding guys of what, what that theme is. Yeah, so we have a quote every year, Chris. We've had one every year since, I mean, Wartman started it before me. Like the quote my senior year was lean on me. Mm -hmm. um, and after we'd win a game, we'd play the song in the locker room and it just kind of became a thing. Um, but it's just it's just cool. So our quote for this year is habits determine character. Um, and, and it's something I was thinking about a lot this summer, just um, because in a lot of ways, you know, how we're going to be remembered and, and this season is going to be based on our habits. And, um, you know, we're a high character program. We pride ourselves on doing the right thing, on winning the right way, losing the right way. Um, and so it's one of those things that, you know, I, I kind of have been reminding the guys this summer and obviously into, into the season of, hey, you know, like, 
our character is going to be determined by the habits that we have. And, and so we, we had really good habits this summer. Um, we had guys coming to the weight room and working hard. You know, we, we've um, had good habits throughout fall camp. And it's just one of those things of, you know, those can be everything from you know, coming to practice. What do you do at practice? Right. Um, doing your homework. Do we have good habits when it comes to schoolwork? You know, we're at a point in the in the school year now where we're a couple weeks in and we're starting to get some tests and guys are going to start, you know, grades and we don't want to worry, but we want to make sure we have good habits in the classroom. And um, so it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, I thought about it a little bit and, and it really seems to fit this group. And, and, and as long as we're, we have good habits, right. Our, our character is going to follow. Um, so that's where we're at this year, Chris. I, I love it. And I mean, the, the character of the, the Elkhorn Antlers is a tradition, you know, after, after you guys won the state championship in 2020, we had our team banquet. And the first thing that Warman gets up there and talks about was a letter that he got from one of the schools they were playing about how much character our players had on the sidelines, how they treated the chain crew and they treated the officials. It, it, it's, it does. That's, those are all habits. They determine characters and character and they lead to, to great things. And if it goes really good, you win a championship with it. So I am right there with you. Um, you guys, uh, Tim and really, you know, you guys are lucky to play for the Antlers, play for a coach like Coach Fiker, Coach Backus, Neismer, all the guys, all the coaches you have up there, you know, they care about you guys a lot. And um, uh, Coach, we're going to kind of wrap it up here, but I just want to wish you guys the best of luck. You know, I'd, I'd love to get out there and see you guys. Hopefully we can catch on a night that we're not playing. But um, in, in my heart, I got a special place for the Antlers. And um, I'm going to be pulling for you guys all year long. I know you guys are going to turn it around and then have a bunch of wins and, and be a really tough team at the end. So, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. Um, before we wrap up, I, I'm going to remind everyone out there that's watching or listening again to subscribe to our channels right down there for YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast, retweet, share, like, and comment, and help us spread the word about these great programs like the Elkhorn Antlers and especially the offensive line. You know, I love having you guys on here. Cause um, you know, they don't put all in the paper very much, but we, we can put you guys out there to make, make you guys look great. So again, thanks guys for coming on. We really appreciate it. Best of luck this week against Norris and best of luck the rest of the season. Thanks for coming thanks, on. Chris. Thank you. Thanks for having us, man.